A properly charged musket ball can kill, but what can be the maximum distance it can cause a lethal injury? Hello guys, this is Captain Ball here, your favorite gun channel in beautiful, bright English language. And I have a very interesting topic for you. I will be searching for the point where a projectile fired from a 17th century musket like this. This is the same that we were using for the ballistic experiments for the Novi Zrin project. You can find the link to that video under the description. Now we are searching for the point where the bullet fired from this musket reaches a velocity where it is not able to cause a severe injury to a human body. Now how we are going to do it? I have a corny to control the muzzle, well, not the muzzle velocities, but the impact velocities, because I'm going to reduce the charge so I will be able to shoot nearly from point blank. I have a ballistic gelatin block that will, this is an FBI standard clear view ballistic gelatin block that is, let's say, approximately matches the average density of a human body. And I have a beautiful bacon here. This is four to five centimeter thick. It has, it is, it is absolutely as it was cut from the poor little pork. We have the skin on it, which means that it will be probably a good target material for, for, for uh, simulating the human flesh. So the bullet to enter the gelatin block will have to penetrate the skin. We'll have to penetrate the, the meat behind it, which is, uh, let's say four to five centimeters, and then it can enter the gelatin block. Now, it is an interesting question from which point we think that a bullet will cause a lethal wound on a human body. We have beautiful studies for that. Before we go on, please subscribe and switch on notifications. If you are after more exclusive content from me, please support us on patreon.com slash capandball and be a member of the History of Weapons and War platform. To understand how far a musket can reach to kill an enemy soldier, we need the velocity and energy of the bullet in relation with the distance. To arrive to this graph, first we must find the muzzle velocity of the projectile and then using the ballistic coefficient we can simulate the trajectory and the ballistics of the bullet on its entire path with such softwares as Quick Target. Our ballistics research of the muskets of the siege of Novizrin in 1664 in Hungary proved the muzzle velocity of 305 meters per second for a 29 gram 17.15 mm or 0.675 inches pure lead round ball fired from a matchlock musket. This 305 meters per second was used to simulate the outer ballistics of the projectile. This research was based on 29 gram musket balls that impacted the wall of a siege trench 80 meters from the fort of Novizrin. They were fired by Christian soldiers. We recreated the deformity of the projectiles, measured the impact velocity, and knowing the target distance of 80 meters, we arrived to the muzzle velocity. So using the data from Novizrin, we can draw the velocity and energy chart. The red line shows the decrease of the velocity in relation with the range, while the blue shows the same for the kinetic energy. As muskets are not the most accurate guns, I cannot hit a 20 by 20 cm target at 550 meters with a smoothbore gun, so I reduced the charges to simulate 500 to 600 meter impact energies at a distance of only 5 meters. However, when the charge was below 8 grains, in many cases the musket misfired, making the project quite annoying sometimes. The shots you will see did not happen in the order I show it in the film, as the muzzle velocities varied greatly. Due to the small volume of charge and large caliber, the same 10 grains of powder could result 84 to 120 meters per second of impact velocities randomly, meaning that the charge will be irrelevant. It is somewhere between 8 to 15 grains. Now I will show you the shots in an order showing the fastest projectile first. Let's start the fun. Let's charge the beast. The powder charges are varying from 7 to 15 grains of 1F powder. And I have to be careful to have powder close to the touch hole, otherwise it won't ignite. For a uniform wedding, I will be using a felt wed, originally manufactured for shotgun shells. I needed a little shaping to fit. I don't push it down too much, otherwise I can obstruct the touch hole, the powder charge is so small. And the bullet will be the same that we used in our shooting test regarding the ballistics of Novizrin, which means it's a 29 gram lead round ball, pure lead round ball. 
just to seat it firmly on top of the bed. It's done. Okay, and this is how the target looks like. So we have a muzzle velocity or an impact velocity set. And we are just interested in will it penetrate or not. This is the belly of the pork with the skin on it. It's completely fresh. We'll see what happens. Let's see what happens at 171 meters per second of impact velocity. That is 423 impact energy and is 230 meters of impact distance. At this distance, the enemy does not have a chance. The bullet pierced through the skin, the meat, and the gelatin block. Only the felt wet bounced from the skin. Our next velocity is 102 meters per second. That is 150 joules of kinetic energy that corresponds to 448 meters of target range. It penetrated the skin and penetrated the entire meat, which means it is four centimeters, and it is embedded in the gelatin block the bullet is here at uh, a depth of uh, around a one and a half centimeter. This is the point of penetration and that is the bullet embedded into the gelatin. Next impact velocity is 100 meters per second. That is 145 joules of kinetic energy that corresponds to 455 meters target range. That was again 100 meters per sec. And the bullet did penetrate the meat, did penetrate the skin and the meat because we have the impact point here and it clearly is visible. And it went just a little bit inside the ballistic gelatin, but it bounced back and we have the bullet here. <laughs> but anyway, it penetrated around five centimeters of meat, which is quite good, which means that it can cause a severe damage. It can also be lethal. Next velocity is 91 meters per sec. That is 120 joules of kinetic energy that corresponds to 490 meter target range. And this is 91 meters per second, ladies and gentlemen. The bullet did not penetrate the gelatin block but it did penetrate the skin. Here is the point of impact and here is the bullet embedded in the meat again. <laughs> Next one is 84 meters per sec. That is 102 joules of kinetic energy that corresponds to 525 meter target range. And this was 84 meters per second, 84 meters per second. It did not penetrate into the gelatin, but the bullet did penetrate the skin. And it stopped just in the meat. <laughs> so this is the point the bullet penetrated the skin. It did not enter the gelatin block, but it is embedded in the meat, which means that the bullet is in fact around four centimeters deep, which means that it can cause a severe damage. Next shot is 69 meters per sec. That is 69 joules of kinetic energy. This corresponds to 596 meters target range. So at 69 meters per second, the bullet could not penetrate the skin. Here is the impact point, it's beautiful round, and I could collect the bullet from the vicinity of the table. It did not penetrate, of course, the gelatin, which means it is intact, which means that at this distance, 
sorry, at, at this velocity, at 69 meters per second, this uh, 28 gram lead bullet cannot injure and cannot kill. Let's summarize what we just saw. At around 69 meters per second, that is 69 joules of kinetic energy, the bullet bounced off the skin and was not able to penetrate. But even if there was no penetration, the impact had a significant force, meaning it could still break weak bones or shoot an eye out. But it is not lethal. This means that over approximately 550 meters, the soldier could be safe from lethal wounds even if he was having a bath naked in a nearby stream. At around 80 to 100 meters per second impact velocity, that is around 100 to 145 joules of kinetic energy, the bullet penetrated the skin and the 4-5 centimeter meat as well. These bullets were not able to penetrate the gelatin, but that does not mean that they won't kill, as it could reach vital organs of an unarmored opponent. The lowest velocity shot corresponds to around 550 meter distance, meaning this could be the outer edge of lethality if the muzzle velocity was 305 meters per second. Above 100 meters per second, the bullet penetrated the gelatin block also, meaning it could reach deeper organs as well. At 170 meters per sec, it pierced through the 15 centimeter block, so it is out of question that it had the power to kill. These velocities mean 145 to 425 joules of impact energy. Our poor little bacon is not suitable for eating anymore, as it is a bit contaminated with lead. These tests are not anymore theory, but are practical proofs. But let's not forget that there are variables in this question. What happened if the opponent had a thick clothing in winter time? Has the human skin the same thickness as the pork skin? Where does the bullet impact the body? But as a final conclusion, we can also say that the bullet that pierces the skin and travels a few centimeters in the meat can kill you if you are that guy chosen by the bad fate. So ladies and gentlemen, I think that was a very, very interesting project. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment this video and also switch on notifications because uh, the algorithm is not helping the gun related channels to grow on YouTube. So you are the one who can help me. Please don't forget that we are also present on the History of Weapons and War platform and we are also running our own Patreon page where you can support us. I will be very grateful for, for your support. Here you can find, and both on the History of Weapons and War platform, you can find exclusive content from Cap and Ball time by time. You have early access. You can watch these videos at free, so it has a lot of benefits for a little money. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think that this was a very, very interesting topic again. but. Uh, I also think that we will have to continue that kind of experiments with different kind of guns as well. So ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.